In this ReWorld Engine tutorial, we will take a look at the basic parts of the ReWorld Engine, which includes part types, part properties, collisions, anchoring, and gravity, as well as moving, rotating, and scaling parts. Let's get started with an empty model plate. From the toolbar, this icon will create a new part and place it in the workspace. To add a new part to the workspace, left click on this icon as shown. That's great! Now click on the drop down arrow, which will allow you to select different part types or shapes. ReWorld has several shapes to choose from. This really makes things easy for you when it comes to building and modeling. Using these parts, you can build anything that you can imagine, for example, houses, trains and cars, or amazing game maps like this. To select a part, simply click on the part with your left mouse button, or drag a box like this, to select one part, or multiple parts. With a part selected, we can now see more information in the properties panel. Here, we have the part name, the class name, and the parent ID of the part object. Type a custom name for your part, like this. The class name is the corresponding object's type. In this case, the cube's object type is a part. The parent ID refers to the object's parent. In this case, the cube part's parent is the workspace. If we check the work bar, you can see that the cube is actually inside the workspace, making the cube a child, and the workspace its parent. The use type is the part's shape. From this drop-down you can change the selected part's shape. Here, we can change the part's position, rotation and size, by entering in new values for the X, Y and Z axis. For example, if I change the part's position like this, it will move the part to that exact position in the world. You can also use the Select tool here, which allows you to select and drag objects around. Another way to move the part's position is to use the Move tool. The Move tool allows you to move the part along the X, Y or Z axis. Also, with the Move tool selected, you can now see this small colored box. The colors correspond to the X, Y and Z axis colors. By clicking and holding a side within this box, you can now move and drag the part around the axis of that color. In the toolbar, there is a checkbox for collisions. By turning collisions on, it will force the part to collide with other parts in the workspace. This allows you to position parts exactly next to each other. The Move checkbox allows you to move parts exactly the specified number of units. Here, I entered one unit, so when I use the Move tool, the part is moving exactly one unit each time. Now, let's look at part rotation. In the Properties panel, there is a Rotation section, where you can enter in values for the X, Y and Z axis. This will rotate the part on the specified axis, as shown here. In the toolbar, is an icon for rotating parts. Clicking the Rotate icon, allows you to rotate the part along the X, Y and Z axis as shown. To rotate at specific angles, first tick this box, and then enter a number, such as 25 for the unit angle. This angle is now used when rotating an object. As you can see, each time I move this rotation slider, it is moving 25 degrees, since that is the value I entered. If your part is touching another part, such as the base plate, make sure you turn off collisions before trying to rotate your part or move your part first and then rotate it. Now let's look at changing the part size and scaling objects. In the properties panel, there is a size section here where you can enter in size values for the X, Y and Z axis. And in the toolbar, there is an icon called scale, which allows you to enlarge or shrink objects. When using the scale tool, you can increase and decrease the size along each axis like this, by dragging each axis as shown. Or you can click and hold the box in the center to keep the current properties of the object and enlarge or shrink it like this. 
In the appearance section of the properties panel, you can change a part's appearance, such as its material and color. Materials have two drop-down options, which allows you to choose from different textures easily. And by changing the values in tiling, you can also adjust how dense the texture is. For faster access, you can use these icons in the toolbar to quickly make these same changes to the part's appearance. You can make a part invisible in your game by setting the transparency to zero. The four buttons at the top of the properties panel are Anchored, Gravity is Lock, and Collisions. These buttons allow you to specify how parts and objects are affected in your game. For example, Anchored means that the part is unaffected by the laws of physics. So when a part or parts are set to Anchored, they stay in the same place, even if they are in the air. With Gravity, having it on applies gravity to the parts. Whereas turning gravity off, will set gravity to zero. Notice, that the anchored parts are not affected by gravity either. With a button called as lock. This locks objects, making them unselectable in the window. Once the parts, or objects are locked, they can only be selected from the work bar, as shown here. By turning as lock off, you can now select the parts in the window again. Having the ability to lock parts in place is great. Let's say I wanted to move this structure, but not the floor. I can simply lock the floor and then select all the other parts and move it into place. The collisions button determines if other parts and objects can collide. Watch what happens on this wall when I turn collisions off on one side. First, the side which has collisions turned on stops my player when I run into it while the other wall which has collisions turned off, now lets me go right through it. Likewise, when moving parts around the workspace, the collision checkbox works the same way. And when the collision checkbox is checked, this allows you to line parts up perfectly. Thank you for watching this ReWorld Engine tutorial, stay tuned for more ReWorld tutorials, see you in the next one.